was out um, to the supermarket in France and I came back through Rouge Jean and the antique store was open. So I decided to look in and I bought these two old cars here. Uh, kind of two for one really. I mean, they gave me the extra and he cut the price so I took the two of them. Because one has a wind up motor working and the other one is just maybe for parts but who knows what I'll do with it. This one needs a, is hand painted so it needs respraying and I don't know what the windows, whether they just glass shield or not. So I'll work that all out, but I've taken the bottoms off and I'll show you what I got. Yes, yeah, so, hello there. I just took out the screws and I'll show you what I got. So I got this here, the windscreen is cracked here. Now they kind of come up and stop there, both of them, so I don't know whether they were broke off or not yet. I'll have to check that out. So I took the screws off, they're very easy to unscrew. Just a plate and a whole pile of screws around and screw it. So I've taken the two shells off at the moment. I love the shape of that car though. Look at that. Isn't that something? It's like eight or nine inches long. And they're really dusty and dirty. The motor has got a gear that's a bit broke, so I'll take this motor off. I clean this up and I'll make one work first for the blue car, I think, because I like the color. And I must like keep the paint and the oldness. So. So I'm just going to go at it and take it apart a bit and see what I got. Yeah, so I stripped all the car apart yesterday. There's all the parts over here. If I can turn the camera a little. Which I can't at the moment. Hang on. Yeah, so I stripped the car yesterday. And here's all the parts. We'll go back to this. There we go. A little fast but hey. Now I made a template for the blue one for the windscreen and it kind of goes in here like this. See and where's my tin I cut out? A little bit disheveled this morning. I don't know what I'm doing. Where's the tin? Where's my cutout gun? Here it is, that long last. And so I made it like this, so it's going to go in like that. Right, and that's going to be cut out. So, and there's little slots here so that it fits in with the seating and kind of goes through this. Like this, through this, there'll be slots there, so it goes through that and comes up from underneath and fits in. Anyways, I'm getting at that. I'm going to strip the um, green car today right now. I got glasses on, gloves. Be really careful this this stripper stuff. And just smear it on. Very gently. Make sure the brushing always goes away from you. Never brush towards you, flick it on yourself. You'll find holes in your shirt. <laughs> This stuff reacts pretty quickly. I gotta do the trying of the wheels very carefully, but I must run to water if they start getting soft. We'll do those first so I can see if they start working. Yeah, it's coming off a little bit. I like the green at all. And I want the wheels to be black again like the olden days. I'm going to move my other car away so I don't want that to get hit with this. Now I do have a little green on the um, bottom of the plate here which I'll lose as well. There, like that. Don't want to see any green when I'm done. Looks like I've just polished this plate. Give it a Brillo pad. Let's get back to this one. The dinky toys I used to dip, but 
can't really dip this stuff. It smells a bit strong. Ugh. It's beginning to have an effect. Lovely shape of a car though, isn't it? As you can see, it's beginning to work on the wheels here and come off. Now, the minute it starts working quite well, I'll just wash the, to neutralize this stuff you just put water on it. But you know, there you go, it's wiping off nicely. I'll put another daub on that and wipe it. See, it's getting there. We'll just keep cleaning this until it's right. And this is beginning to happen. This needs a little bit more time. And I'll just scrape all that off. There, there's a tan color underneath. Quite ugly. Might have been red once though. I think it was red once. I'm just gonna sit here and scrape and I'll get back to you. Just um, brushing all the acid into this because I not have it in the bath. It's just sitting there. It does come off, look. Getting nice detail. It was covered up with layers of paint. It has some scratches, but you can see there's detail in the doors here that wasn't showing. Might need a little sanding there. There's little scratches here. And uh, why? It's going nicely. My gloves are beginning to melt, so I gotta change those. It's getting close now. Also, I could run a wire brush over it, and it would look really good, so I'm quite happy. I want to get all the green off. I want it to be a totally different car. I might have to use a spray can because I don't have my spray guns at the moment. They're still in Canada. I don't think they're coming over here. Not especially my comp I got the spray unit, the little spray gun, but I don't have the compressor. I might buy one yet though. So there we go. I'm getting close to washing this up and cleaning it up a bit. Yeah. So I'll just keep at this another while and we'll see what we got. Yeah, just willow padding the um, aluminum pieces here. Get off the dirt. Clean it up a bit. Not be perfect, but you know, if this car, one car is going to be sprayed anyway, so. But you know, you can make it look a lot more pleasant. It will dull again. Yeah. We're okay. They call them something else here. Let me see here in front what they call them. They call them jicks. Same thing though. These aren't as good though, they're a little rusty. This is the dashboard here which I want really clean looking. That was the old window, I might have to cut that off. So that for dashboard, see? You can see that? There we go. It's gonna look lovely. Anyway, I'll just keep doing this for a while until they're all clean. Just a simple Brillo pad, you know? You're not going to see any of that underneath stuff. I'm just giving them a wipe so they're clean for working on. So I'll just do this one again so you can see. Aluminum bottom. 
doesn't look great and then you just give it a quick rub. Uh, if you want to leave it old or don't overdo it, just do a little bit and just leave it like that. See, that'll dull again, you know. All right, so that's what I'm at. So it's cleaned up pretty good here. I still have something to do in the seat here and I've got to work out how to do this new windshield, but there we go. That's cleaned up. I'm going back to the other windscreen that I was making and I'm going to drill this out now and see if I can get this to fit. Yeah, I need... That's the dashboard here and there's these two bars here that go up underneath the car and clip in here like this. Just show you this like that. See? And what I need is the windscreen to actually go through those two slots. So I'm drilling little holes so I can get these through there and then it'll fit in. And I won't have to glue it, see? It might need some um, glue, but I don't know. find a way of getting these all cut out of these little holes and I got to drill holes in the corner of these windscreens so I can get them out as well. So I'll just work on that for a while and show you it. Yeah, I'm just finding out the slots, putting the file in here back and forth, cleaning out these slots and then it'll come in here like this and this will create my new windscreen in my car. I gotta still cut out the windows and file them. So back to the filing. I'm using a Dremel to go from one to the next with a little diamond bit here. And I just slice them out and then I'll file back because it's aluminum and it's easy to file. So. <sighs> have a bit of patience, that's all. Yeah, so after a whole pile of hours of work, there's the windscreen. Now I did have to put a little, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, a little divot. Hang on, I'll get down here. A little divot in the dash there. Right, can you see that there? Small little rivety thing to hold it in place. But you know, to get the edges equaled out and all that. It reminds me a bit of the mask, you know, that car. So, I have a steering wheel yet to do for it. But on this other one, I'm going to just cut this post off and make a different windscreen. I think that might be the wise thing to do here. So I'm just going to cut that off and see what I'm going to do with it. It's kind of the uh, spare car, so. Yeah, on this one, I cut off this, this frame piece here was one pillar like half up and what I'm thinking of doing is inserting this tin across and then I can fill this hole here and fixing it but I'll have the windscreen come off this now I think. I'm going to make a little bit of a overlap on the dash a little to give it a little bit more style you know, make it look cool just a little anyway so but um, it's going to be left original as much as I can but with that crack there and that, this is the best way I can do, deal with it. And uh, you know, it's a little bit of changing, but you know, you can't really do much with this here. You can't really put a pillar up again. So I'll build the windscreen off this tin and up and go from there. So that'll be the second car. It's cleaned up quite nicely though, so we're getting there. Yeah, today I'm working on the steering wheel for the two cars and it's been a challenge so far. I did get the outside of the steering wheels done with a bit of copper wire bent around a cap and then with the calipers measured it so that it's got the right diameter. So that's number one. But now the hard part is 
getting the center columns on this. And this is amazing because this little toy has actually grips in it for the fingers. What detail for the, that year? I must look up the year. I think it's 1930. If anybody knows the car, it'd be great if they comment on it. So let's get in, down here and I'll show you what I'm doing. There we go. Where's the vice? There it is. Under my armpit there. Lovely. Right. We'll zoom in a bit. I don't shake the camera too much. And there you have it. I'm making crisscrosses. I did saw one with the saw a little. I can do that now. But I'm making crisscrosses for the steering columns so I can solder them in. And you know I have a little paper clip piece which I will show you now if I can find something to hold it with. Everything gets kind of there. And that's going to go on top as the cap of the steering wheel. See? Looks pretty much the same. And lighter copper wire will go through, will be soldered out of these to make the the branches out for the steering wheel. So there you go. That's everything I'm doing. And I'm just going to saw this a little. You can file it too with a needle file. You can see if you're a little off too, you know. I'm a little off that way. I should be that way more with that one. Gotta straighten it up. So I'll be here a while doing this. That's definitely off. Shouldn't have sawed it. I should have stayed inspiring. It's getting there. Getting back on track. So this comes across like this. And we solder that on. And it's fixed then. And then I can put in the rest of them and cut out the one. Need a fixed point. So there we go, and that'll be the steering wheel. A lot of little detail. Yeah, I've got one, two, three, four soldered on. It's not really taking very well. I mean, there's too much heat coming out of this centerpiece. But once I clean it up, file it, it should look okay. So I have another two struts to solder on, and I'll have one wheel done. It's taken me quite a while though. Vintage, you know. So, we're getting somewhere. Bit of a circular copper wire, a heavier duty, and then a lighter one across, cutting slots across, and then putting in the pieces. What I used though is, you know, the lamps, you know, electrical lamps, the outdoor lights and that. They have posts and they have these screw-on tops. Some have these caps, like screw-on caps, you know, when you're taking off the lid to change the bulb. And basically, that's all that is. Basically the top of a old light fixture for holding the uh, glass on, you know, outdoor lamps usually. And I crisscrossed it and put that on and then put a paper clip cap on it. And this is what we got at the moment. It looks lovely. I'm very happy with that. And there's a rivet in the bottom here on the shaft so that it fits. So, so we've got it all put together. I just got to clean. I've been filing quite a while, so I got to clean it up more. Just zoom in for you. Well, I always go the wrong way when I do that. And there you go. See how nice that's going to look in the car. Vintage. Perfecto. So this is where I've got with the windscreen tonight. And there'll be filler put in here in this crack here. In here. Put the red around so you can see. In there. I'll put some filler in there. Glue this underneath here to the bottom. As you can see it's got a tab here now and um, fill in all of this and clean it up and make it look all one and clean the dash all the dash needs cleaning you can see it's really messy still 
So that's where I am. I'm filing away. I'm going to start filing right now. Yes, so here are my epoxing in the wind, wind screen. And there's that hole there, see? We're trying to get rid of. Almost I have to do another second time. And I'll just wipe this off so that it's done. I'm going to fill some of the cracks in the car as well when I'm at it. There's a fly flying around here all the time, sitting on me like a pet. Yeah, I've spent the whole morning making this little wheel work. So when you put the steering wheel back in, it goes back and forth, see? Well, it did. It's still a little loose on that end. I don't have that screw in. But as you can see, it's working again. It's all a little bit wonky, but there we go. So I had to make this pillar here, see? We screw that in a bit more. We had to make I had to make this pillar here because this one was broke, as you can see, it snapped off. So what I used was a lamp post spacer, a light spacer, like for the top of the light. And I also used it for washers, and then I used the screw-on cap as the screw-on um, round, you know, the way they're round and they screw on like this, a bit like this here. And basically, look, I cut that one off, and that's down in the bottom, and I made another one into a hexagon to hold it in. But you can see it up in the top here in the corner, and there's a piece cut off to make a spacer, so. And there it goes in the bottom, see? This one's a little loose still, but I'll work on that in a minute, it just needs a bit of bending. I did make that hole bigger thinking it was on this, this was in the front, so I did make a little bit of a mistake there. But it's going to be okay, it's going to work. The only other thing I have is the um, wheel, the uh, steering wheel thing comes out every once in a while, which i got to fix somehow. But we're getting really close now, see? Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is replace one of the little cogs in the wind-up engine. As you can see, this one's bust here. And I've got a second motor from the other car, and it looks like the gear is the same, so I'm trying to get this off, so I have a little bit of a collar on this still. All right. I can solder it on, but I would love to keep that collar when I get it out. So that's what I'm trying right now, so I'm working on that. And then I'm going to put it onto this cog here and give it a tap of a solder and see if it will make this motor run. So, I've had really good luck. I've got the um, cog from the other car on, the piece, and voila, as they say in French. I've got it working. I'm so pleased. This is my first wind-up toy I've got repaired with the cogs. So, it needs a little straightening. The cog here, this one, a little bit more. I don't want to play with it too much more, it's working. It's taken me a while to get one of these working, so yuppity doo! Let's put the car together. Yeah, so I've added some little details here, like a gear shift. There's something to point with. Gear shifter. There was a hole there, so I put it look like, make it look like a little bit of a pedal, and just a cap over this other hole. I don't know what they were for. Maybe later on that will reveal itself. I've just bended these tabs on this dashboard, and that's all ready to go. Now, we have the steering wheel to put in here, which is fairly ready. It does jam, but I might put a little bit of super glue on just to make sure. I should use epoxy, but, you know, it, ooh, we're through now. And my steering wheel goes on the end here like this, all right? It should steer that, ooh. No, well, that didn't work out yet. There she goes, she's steering. I don't know how the steering wheel's held in if you pull back on it. It's an interesting one. There's no wash or anything. I must look that up quickly. Because you can pull it out, see. I think there's supposed to be a washer on that, so. Let's go have a look. Yeah, at long last I got the car running and she's winding up nicely, look. I have it wound up quite a ways already, so there we go, and uh, 
There we go, she's running. So I'm quite proud of that. And that's that car done. I'm missing a couple of screws. I gotta find some, and that's it. She's all fixed. There we go. Wound up car fixed. I put a little gear sticker in to kind of modern, and this needs to be maybe black instead of metal. That's what it was originally. But I'm happy with my results. That's the car finished. A one car done. Yeah, I gotta get some uh, screws like these ones here. They'll turn up. I put in these, they're, they're the right threads, but I prefer these older style ones here. So when I get a couple, I'll put them in. They'll turn up, but in general, the car is finished. A little bit of dirt in the wheels here, but in some ways I don't mind that at the moment, this stage. I might wash this one out a bit because this one's pretty clean. But we're ready to go. Steering's working. There we go. Right. Key's working. It doesn't jam. The key was jamming there. I had to change it a little bit. I got a ski, my steering in. I put a gear shifter in for fun just because it had a hole in the floor. And I patched two holes in the floor with two little eyelids. And a rivet is put into the dash here just to hold the, the um, window in place. But it's still genuine as I could get it. And I'm quite happy with that. So there we go. One uh, vintage wind up toy repaired. Yes. Yeah, I've decided to go with this car green. So I'm giving it a, a light spray, like first coat. See what I think of it. Now that I got the other one working. I'm using cans because I don't have a compressor here yet. So I'm finding this liquid dick is quite nice. Never used it before. It seems to be coating quite well. I don't think this uh, paint has a shine. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think I'll just leave that sit there. Very good. Voila. Let's see how that turns out. Yeah, so um, finished the uh, blue car and I basically took the cog, the only piece of cog part I needed. There was only one cog in this wind up. There's no spring or anything anymore. So this is a free rolling one at the moment because I don't have the wind up motor. But um, I finished restoring it and I've restored it to this green kind of a matte finish which I really like and a cream seat. So I'll just let you have a look at it and basically have the two cars done. So there's my first two wind up toys completed. I hope to find a motor for this or something for it later on, but you have to have patience and time. So we'll just move on to the next project for the video for the video reasons. So let's take a look.